Welcome back to the Wrong One Popular Opinions. Today's video is a very simple one, hopefully not a very long one because I will not be ranty. This is just my replacement for wrap-ups, as we all well know. Things I recently read since the beginning of the year. Essentially, we're going to start with 2024. It is not that many books, like, in number, <laughs> but it is a lot in terms of size and volume and how much I actually read, so let's just immediately get into it. Some things I will elaborate on, some things absolutely not, but I wanted to check in a little bit to show you what I've been reading in 2024. It's been, <laughs> it's been a mixed bag, to say the least. The first thing we'll be talking about is Demian by Herman Hesse. We've, um, <laughs> I, I don't think we've discussed this before because obviously I haven't really mentioned it, but I love the classics edition, like it's beautiful, the font is very readable, it's a very nice edition. However, <laughs> this was or used to be at least one of my mother's favorite authors and like it's just, he's very famous in the realm of what he does. I think he also won a Nobel Prize for Literature, I'm just not sure for which book, Steppenwolf or maybe the other one, I, I don't know. This book <laughs> did not did did not like it. I think I gave it three stars, so I was actually quite nice about it, but did not like it at all. It felt like, and I usually use this as an insult. I also kind of used it at all the Steinbeck books that I didn't like, the same insult, but it felt like the diary of a very miserable man, and that is just not literature that I partake in. Like, I'm not interested in it at all. There was no story here to be had. The th few thoughts that were actually coherent and not just mumbling weren't that great. I just did not enjoy this, like, at all. I know none of this is literal, so, like, when it gets to that point where he has questionable relationships with the Demian family, I, I just lost interest entirely. The ending was so cheesy. I didn't care about any of like the problems that were bothering the main character. I don't even know what the main character's name was. I forgot. I barely remember he was called Max. So I don't care about anything else. This just felt like the musings of someone who was having troubles within his personal life. And I know he wasn't Catholic, Hermann Hesse, but he went to a Catholic school. And you can tell because a lot of that stuff kind of bothers him. Like He's like, well, maybe, like, he's deconstructing some stuff said in the Bible in the way that I feel like only people who went to Catholic school would. Like, maybe I actually don't have to believe this. It just felt very uninteresting because if it isn't taken literally, then it is literally taken, like, the musings of this man and what he wants to tell us. And I just wasn't interested in any anything he wanted to tell me. This is like a very short book. I believe it's like not even 150 pages. 130 pages. I was so bored. I was bored out of my mind. This is a short book. Very palatable, objectively. But I was so bored. I <laughs> nearly fell asleep like three times. It took me so many sittings to finish this. And it's so short. So I, I have nothing else to say about it. I don't think I will be reading anything more by him. I'm just not interested in the way he presents his stories. Because it isn't a story. Like, it isn't a story, it's just his thoughts about whatever subject he's speaking on. And I don't care about his thoughts, I don't like his thoughts, so I, I don't really care for the format of the way he's writing them, I guess. <sighs> the next thing I want to talk about is <laughs> going to be, like, a little bit disappointing for some people, but it's short stories in general. I need to talk about short stories in general because this is going to be, like probably the only mini rant of this video. We're going to be talking about Illuminations by Alan Moore and also primarily this. <laughs> primarily this. I hate short stories, I just do. Now some people like writing them. I um, in some way understand this because I feel like it's good exercise for the writers to like change writing styles, to change atmospheres, to change description types. Like I get liking short stories as a writing format because it's very good to practice. However, I hate reading them. I hate it. It could be, there's always that argument of like, but you haven't found the right short story. Perhaps. However, <laughs> I raise you. 
I read this, which obviously, objectively garbage. Objectively garbage. This was not what it presents itself as. This presents itself as a fantasy collection of short stories about dragons. It is about dragons, technically, but it's not fantasy. None of this is fantasy. It's just horrible writers who are obviously not fantasy writers. Not horrible as in style-wise, just horrible fantasy writers who are not fantasy writers, so they don't know what to do with this. <laughs> so all the stories are garbage, except the one written by, what what's her name? <laughs> I don't know anymore. The girl who, girl who drank the moon. That author's book is the story is the only one who's actually creative at all. Sorry about that. <laughs> this book. Now, the argument that you haven't read the right short story again is true, but <laughs> this and Illumination proves otherwise because one story good in this 500 page collection that actually has like an impossible to read font, like it's just not readable. Now, Illuminations by Alan Moore. I love Alan Moore, <laughs> but apparently I'm not really suited to his his writing. Like there's something about, he, he is in this. He's very, very sexual for some reason. I mean, he usually is like sexual and crass and swearing and stuff. Like he's usually that way in his graphic novels too. But for some reason when it's a book, it was just ever present. I was like, <laughs> I am so not interested in this man's, frankly, not that fun thoughts. <laughs> like he does unsettling stuff usually, like Viper Vendetta and Watchmen are not like this happy, happy-go-lucky story, but this was just not, not the vibe. I read a lot of the stories. I think I stopped before the long ones, like the last two I think are like a couple hundred pages. I read all the short ones. I don't think I liked a single one of them. It was kind of like, why are all of these so, so gross and just so bleak and not, not that good and so sexual. I did not enjoy them. So while I like Alan Moore, apparently his short stories are not for me. <laughs> not, not for me at all. There's something about graphic novels and his writing that kind of makes the marriage of everything very, very good. This, I don't even want to talk about this anymore. If you really want to see me rant about this, check out my last vlog, but not good. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. If you like a single one of these authors, that means you probably don't like fantasy that much. You just like real life events and real life places under a fantasy lens where like, oh, there's some magic over there, but that's not really the point of this book. If you like that, this is the book for you. <laughs> this is the book for you because I feel like everyone who doesn't like fantasy but likes the idea of dragons could enjoy this. But I love fantasy. I love not knowing that a story was based in China or Italy or the US. I like having that lens be completely immersive where I do not think about the real world while reading it. So this is not, this, this is horrendous. Horrendous. I'm not sure if I want to get rid of it yet. That's why I'm still holding on to it. But I'm this close to just selling it because it was that bad. It was genuinely that bad. And that's it for my little rant on short stories. Now it's possible that I haven't read the right ones. However, <laughs> however, I just don't like the format of it. I don't like having, I don't know what the limit is, like a word count limit. I think it's under 30,000 words or something like that, or maybe under 20. I don't know. Do not enjoy it. It's not enough time for me to give a crap about the characters or the story. So I have to give a crap about the idea or the theme or like whatever the author wants to discuss. And mostly I don't. <laughs> mostly I don't because I am not here. If I wanted to read like a short problem or a discussion, I would like, again, open a blog post, go online. <laughs> I am not interested in buying a book where it's just someone ranting about something where I don't have enough time to care about the plot, the characters, or there just isn't any plot. I'm not interested in the short format because it's not why I read books and it's not interesting to me, frankly, at all. If I don't care about the characters or what they're doing and you tell me that it doesn't even matter because it's just a discussion, I, I won't care. I won't care. I do not like short stories and I don't think I will ever like them. There may be an exception, but it's just the way it is <laughs> for now. <laughs> Next up, I read like the Long John Silver 
graphic novels. I think I read those every year, usually during the summer. I'm not sure why I read them right now <laughs> in like January or February, I think January. But I was just so in the mood for something short but very good. It's just such an excellent graphic novel. I think it may be my favorite. Like V for Vendetta and Watchmen are obviously like works of art. But this is just short and good in a way that the short stories I just mentioned wish they could be. Like this obviously has the strength of being based on something I know. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And because I have that basis, I already love these characters. The short, short, the short stories don't have that advantage because I already know and love these characters and I care about them already. So I, it's just such a delight. I enjoy the short journey that they go on. The art is wonderful. And I just love the character of John Silver so much. That is true gray morality and I stand by it because I've never come across a character who I would actually call morally gray, but I think he would be it. Like he would actually be it. Like you would be sorry to see him hanged, but also you kind of believe he deserves it. Like I just love it. <clears throat> it's just such a delight. The next thing I do want to talk about, which I'm looking for the book, <laughs> is Tamarare. <laughs> I think I read books two, three, and four in 2024. Liked book two, although I thought it took them 30 years <laughs> to actually get to China. Did not like book three. I liked about two things in book three. And I liked book four, but I believe that I am losing steam. I am losing steam with this series. Now, this is the book that I have to read next. And I'm putting it off because I have other things to do first, but while I did say I enjoy this series, it's not, it's very forgettable. Like it's one of those things that you enjoy while you're reading it and you skim and you don't really care about everything being realistic or not because you're just here for the dragon lies. But as soon as I finish these books, I have no more memory of them. I do not, <laughs> I mean, I remember plot points, obviously. I do not know any of the character names except like the main two. <laughs> I do not care really what's going on with Napoleon. I do not care about the war. I do not care about the outcome of this series. I just hope that every single book will be better than book three <laughs> because half of book three was unreadable. I didn't care about the military strategies. This is not why we read this series, <laughs> Naomi Novak. I need you to be less serious about this because we know you're not good when you're serious. <laughs> I've read your other two books. So you need to, you need to keep going. But currently, this is like the breaking point, I guess, because in this book, they're done with the military stuff. So hopefully this will be better, but we'll see. We'll see. I did buy the entire series, though, after book one. So now I am going to obviously read it. But again, it's not that I'm actually disliking it. It's just that I'm not actively liking it either. Like when I'm done with it, I do not care about it in the slightest, which is not really a good recommendation for a book. I will very briefly touch on this, but The Witcher I finish in January, I think. I just forgot how much I actually love that series. Like throughout the last year I had like completed the majority of the reread. I think I read the first two books a while ago, but I completed the majority of the reread this year. And while the later books are, are bad, they're just bad because he stops caring. <laughs> Like book two, I don't think I even read book two because it's mostly about Siri and Yennefer, which are arguably the least interesting characters in that series, or at least stuff that happens with them. But book three and parts of book four that don't have anything to do with Siri, impeccable, Im impeccable. He's just so good at creating a group of characters that I personally would follow anywhere. Like... The group, <laughs> the group that Geralt forms, plus Angrilim, like, later, the group that Geralt forms is so near and dear to me. I have no words for it. Like, again, he isn't the kind of writer where the end game matters because he doesn't ca He cares even less than you do <laughs> about wrapping things up in a satisfactory way. But he is so good. <laughs> so good at just creating a group atmosphere that you 
cannot stop reading about. Like this group means everything to me. It just means everything to me. Every single member, it's very rare for me to like every single member of like a friendship group in fiction equally, but he nailed it. He nailed it. If any one of them did anything, I would support them, but I have no words. I genuinely have no words. I forgot how much I love them. They may be my favorite like found family group of all time in fiction just because it's very difficult to get me to love all of them equally. Like when they have conversations, I do not prefer anyone. I do not agree with anyone more than anyone else because I love all of them to bits. On that note, <laughs> on that note, Kahir, I would like to marry <laughs> Risen to the ranks of fictional crushes. I would like to marry that man. I really would. I do not say that often. I, you may think otherwise, but I genuinely do not have crushes on fictional characters that often where I see myself with them. I can ship people, but I do not really see myself with characters often. It's very rare. Kahir though, <laughs> an exception, an exception to that rule. I love that man so much. He doesn't even get that much page time, but I love him so much. <laughs> Two notable things to comment on. I read Haunting of Hill House, which is my second Shirley Jackson. I loved it. Now, I read this with my mother. She read it, like, right after me. She didn't love it, and when we discussed it, I realized I didn't love it as much as I thought I did. So I bumped it down a start, but I do still love her atmosphere building. I love how easily her writing can just make me feel like I'm there. I love, love her just setting and the way she writes about things it's very palatable and not just tedious descriptions but I love it I genuinely loved it less than we have always lived in a castle but I still quite enjoyed it and I, <laughs> I don't care about the show I won't watch the show I don't like horror so this was excellent for me just not not the best <laughs> in terms of plot and outcome I preferred the other book <sighs> next thing we won't be discussing this that much because i've ranted enough in my last video but i dnf the count from monte cristo for the third time or second time i want to say second time i think i dnf'd it about 340 pages in i just I, I couldn't i couldn't do it anymore i didn't care there was a total of three things i enjoyed in those 300 pages and when you know that there's 900 pages left and your enjoyment is so rare that when you see the book on your nightstand, you don't feel like reading at all. It's just not good. It's it's not good. So I know everyone and their mother praises this book, but that is none of my business. <laughs> that is none of my business. Everyone in my house loves that book too, but it is none of my business. I couldn't care less at all. I watched the film and I read like the plot synopsis so I know what happened with each character and it was not worth the reading that I did. It was just not worth the effort to get to that outcome because I just don't think it was worth 900 pages <laughs> to get to that outcome. I don't, I don't think it, I believe it and I know it and I will not be picking it, picking it up again because this was just a miserable experience for me. I'm sorry, I'm just, <laughs> don't mind me. Okay. I'm gonna try and like hold on to it here because it's a very, very heavy book. But I've been reading this for, I want to say, a year. <laughs> this, the same thing as with, um, it's over there, Shadow Rising happened with this book. And that is that I started it, read like half of it in a day, and then did not pick it up for <laughs> seven months. <clears throat> I just have issues with books I'm not usually stuff that I start in the summer or near the summer I put off for half a year because as we've established I have depression in the summer I have like seasonal depression in the summer and I just do not feel like reading at all I don't feel like existing to be fair but reading something this dense <laughs> was not not it but when I picked it back up, and I already always stop at a Matt chapter, as much as I may love him, I always stop at his chapters because I feel like when he goes off on the boring descriptions, it's always for some reason a Matt chapter. <laughs> so yeah, I stopped on his 
point of view. But when I got through that, it just, I read it again, like in a day or two, maybe, because it's, it's good. Like it is objectively good. But when you're in that rut, you're in that rut. <laughs> so this is the last of the books though, that I don't read like separately by characters. So I read, I read the women the first time I read it and then I finished Rand and Perrin and Matt this time around. It was excellent. I loved it. I love Rand as always because he is just excellent and I the ending of this book is obviously like a god tier experience like that last chapter is just a delight and I reread some paragraphs of it because it was just that good. I just do wish that I finished it last year but it is what it is. It is what it is. I wasn't in the mood for it but once I did sit down and read it I loved it. Why do I keep the dust jackets on? I still have no idea because they're horrible <laughs> and they're just not not well drawn or proportioned or anything. But when I hold them up, I prefer to have the title instead of just like holding up the spine. I just kind of feel like that looks better. So yeah, I finished it finally. This brick of a book, I think that's the longest in the series in terms of the paperback at least. It's over a thousand pages. But I loved it. I loved it. It was just... I stopped at the worst possible chapter at the worst possible time for me personally, which was the summertime. So I don't know if I will be continuing with the rest, how soon, if at all this year. I don't know. I'm very flexible with this because again, I've read it already. It's not this rush to the ending because I know how everything wraps up. It's just a pleasure read, I guess, where I pick it up when I'm in the mood and dive in so to speak <laughs> lastly we can talk about my current reads which is always always a good time i'm still reading this <laughs> because it's again short story collection but not not like a plot but more like a culture so i am loving this one actually because it's very it's very scottish <laughs> that's all i will say it is it, it is bleh. it is very scottish so i'm really enjoying it and I'm not really halfway through. I'm like a third through. I'm really enjoying this. I'm not rushing it. I just read it when I feel like it. This I am actually also enjoying, but I put this on hold because I need to finish the book that I'll be talking about in a minute, but I am enjoying it. Not as much as Howl because I had like a foundation again for liking Howl, but I do enjoy it. It's pretty fun. It's it has the same vibe. She also just has that very specific vibe associated with her writing that's very good and very fun if you enjoy that kind of thing. The next thing is a library book, which I won't even talk about the other two library books, but in fact, I will just for a minute. I borrowed like three books from the library. The first was Ninth House. Ninth House. I read the first two chapters. I, I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be for me at all. I don't like Lee Bardugo's writing outside of the Grisha trilogy actually. So I knew I wouldn't like it but I still tried it out. I didn't like it. The second one was Hamnet which I also knew I wasn't going to like based on the subject matter and writing style. And again I was right which is why I got them from the library. I think I read a couple chapters and then I got a hunch for what the rest was going to be like. I looked up reviews and it was just confirmation of what I already knew. So those two were very quick DNFs not worth mentioning really but this one I was going to buy but I am since Pillars of the Earth I dread buying anything that I haven't read first because it was just such a miserable time with that book I think that was the only book I bought last year without having read it first and it was it was the worst book I've ever read but this I wanted to actually read. I was very close to buying it. So I got it from the library. I haven't started it yet, but I do want to read it. And at least the subject matter is somewhat more interesting to me. So maybe I will enjoy it, but we'll see. It's again, kind of outside of my genres. I don't like magical realism and this could be that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and then the last book we're going to talk about very quickly because I'm not done with it yet is obviously Dune because the... <laughs> The film is coming out and I need to get ready for it. I'm adoring it. Off the bat. Adoring it. I was afraid I wasn't going to because I read this in 2020. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and I was very afraid I was going to hate it. But I love it. Possibly even more than the first time. 
Now I'm a bit more lazy with it this time around. Obviously all of the stuff with Baron and Faded Outha and all the other characters I'm like skimming through if we're going to be honest but I do love it. I forgot how much I enjoyed the writing which is controversial and how much I enjoyed the characters. Jessica love of my life. Alia I can't wait for her to be born. Paul I just love them so much and I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I think I have like 100 pages left and I won't read Dune Messiah and like the third book. I'm just reading the first one in preparation for the film because again it was a long time ago that I read these books. But I will say just one thing very quickly and then I'm and then I'm done. The films aren't a good adaptation, but it's kind of a good thing because I feel like this isn't adaptable. This book just isn't adaptable because the majority of the story is inside their head or pre-science or inner monologues or something you noticed about another character. None of that is dialogue. So I feel like this is just not an adaptable series. This is my advice. Read the book. If you can't read the book or it's too dense or you don't like the writing style, which is understandable, read the graphic novel because it's a it's a scene for scene adaptation. Like you will get the story of the book, just less lines. Like, but unlike the film, it actually does adapt like every scene, everything that happens, you will see in the graphic novel, just shorter and condensed. Obviously they can't do it line for line, but you will, will get the entire story of the books or the first book at least you will get it through the graphic novels <sighs> and the films <laughs> the films are just not a good adaptation because they can't they literally can't do everything that's in the book they cut out a lot of context a lot of scenes that are irrelevant because they can't tie them to other things in the film without like inner monologues so again bad adaptation but not the fault of the adapters the adapters <laughs> that's not a word you know what I mean not the fault of the people adapting it because it is unadaptable so I think the films are good for what they are like it's probably the best you're ever going to get in terms of visual visual dune of like seeing the sand and the desert and stuff but the rest is just not a good adaptation because it can't really be like <laughs> that's don't expect that if you read the book and say this is so much better I don't think the film is bad the way I thought the first time I saw it. It's just impossible to do. So the film is good, as good as it possibly can be. And it's visually great. So <laughs> side note though, I don't love Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. I, I just don't like them. I feel like they don't have the acting range for the characters. At least, at least Timothy doesn't. But Zendaya, I just never liked as an actor. I liked her dancing and I liked her singing. I watched her and Shake It Up when I was younger. I really liked her singing and I thought she was a good dancer. I never liked her as an actress. So I didn't really love either of them in the roles, but the other actors I thought were fine actually. So that's just a little side note on the film. I'm going like to, to the pre-premiere at the end of February. It's probably going to be great. It better be because the ticket cost me a fortune. So that's it for the video. I guess maybe I'll tell you what I thought of the film eventually when I go see it and what have you been reading? How has your 2024 been going for you? Have you read your favorite book of this year already or the worst one? Please let me know because I always care about that kind of stuff. I really want to know if people started off the year with their <laughs> already most disliked book. That is such a fun thing to talk about. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.